Hi everyone, this is Grace and today we are going to be learning how to do this fun, simple apple picking set. It was totally inspired by my sister who has a real passion and love for hard cider and all things apple. So now to the set. All right, first up is the large apple of the set. And for this whole set, I did a two consistency outline and flood. This is actually one of my older sets. And back in the day, I was much more comfortable with two consistency. And honestly, I think it's just personal preference if you prefer one or two. Now, when I do do a two consistency outline and flood, I nine times out of 10 allow that outline to dry first. Cause the whole point here is that it's holding in the icing, right? So if it's dry, it's going to be a better barrier for that icing. Every once in a while though, I don't let it dry because I'm looking for a more seamless look and that's usually for smaller areas. Now I have allowed the green to dry and I'm using piping consistency on top here. This is probably somewhere between a medium and a soft peak and I'm using a damp, uh, what is this called, a fan brush <laughs> to just brush the icing. Now the reason I'm using a damp brush is I find, especially if you're using more like a medium peak, if the brush is too dry it's not going to really pull the icing all that well, but do not let the brush be wet because if it's wet it's just going to get everything too wet. So for the leaf and the stem here I'm just using a medium peak. Um, hashtag lazy, I don't know. <laughs> lazy or I just didn't want to flood this section. I don't know. And I kind of like the like added texture. I feel like it adds a little bit of extra something to it. Um, doing this kind of zigzag motion is one of my favorite ways to pipe. Um, I think it's a lot more common with buttercream because that's just kind of how you have to pipe buttercream. But anywho, so this is the leaf. Really simple leaf here. And again, two consistency outline and flood. People used to ask me, or at least be curious about why I used to decorate on paper towels. And honestly, it was purely a functional reason for filming. So before Reels and TikTok, it was a square video on Instagram that I was focused on because I was really only on Instagram at first. And so the paper towels, I always buy the select size. <laughs> And then I would um, use one sheet and fold that in half and it becomes a square and that became my perfect frame For making sure that I was getting the cookie in the right spot in the right spot of the frame while filming So that's all um, Nowadays since I have to be able to do both portrait and landscape for TikTok and reels and YouTube um, I don't use the paper towel anymore because I think it's just a cleaner look to do it just on a blank surface so using my soft peak piping consistency here just to do these simple little details on top of this leaf and using that medium peak again to just do that stem real simple real easy so fast and I'm just I'm a fan it's simple but it's great this is a smaller apple I know it's kind of deceiving in this picture here but this is actually more like a mini cookie like a two or two no it's probably two and a half inch cookie but because of the frame it's it's hard to tell this red if you haven't heard me talk about this before for red these days I use exclusively the sugar art master elite in red only way to go um, you don't have to use too much coloring you still need to allow it to develop but it's the best um, a little wet on wet here for that white dot just to give it um, a little bit of dimension like one dimension dimension if that makes sense pretty common thing to do this kind of wet and wet with that scribe I'm cleaning that scribe off after every pull that's really important so you get a clean pull in that wet on wet finishing this off with the leaf and the stem the same way I find this just much faster than flooding that surface and it's one and done and you don't have to worry about craters that's also my favorite I love not having to worry about craters so that is the little apple. And next up in this set, we have absolutely my favorite cookie. So before I ice this whole thing, I want to address the shape of it. It probably, well, it doesn't really, 
Okay, it's not a real cookie cutter. I think what I used was like a cupcake cutter, kind of a janky one, like a metal one. And I cut the top of it off with a dome. So that had a dome, just like kind of a, a dome on the top. So it was more conducive to um, sorry no now I'm remembering okay I've done this cookie twice I apologize so I have done this with um, a cupcake cutter and I just left it as is but this one is this like uh, almost looks like the, the shoot what is it called the diamond oh my goodness <laughs> the one, two, I guess I had four sides. Anyway, all right, I just clearly can't speak. The point is, this was not a cookie cutter that was made this shape. I just made it this shape with cutting it. And you can do that with cutters if you need something a little bit different. Just just cut out the cookie with a cookie cutter and then adjust it with your knife or whatever. Um, let me just talk quickly about how I'm making the basket part. That was just a thick royal icing, a thick flood icing. And I flooded it in alternating sections so that they would dry and have definition in between the sections. And I'm using that um, the same thick flood here and I cut uh, the tip of the bag at an angle so I could get a little bit of a flatter sort of um, pipe on it. That was a moment where I wish I had a piping tip because there are piping tips that make it much easier to do kind of a flat pipe if that makes sense instead of like a round one. but. It was good enough. Now for the apples here, this is somewhere between a medium and a soft peak. And I know I'm lazy. I, I don't have the patience to settle the tips on all of the apples. So I've left them as is with the little tips on them. YOLO. YOLO my friends. <laughs> But, you know, I guess it makes it look more apple-y. I don't know. And for this kind of, um, like, bushel of apples situation where there are layered apples, I like to make this as not methodical as possible. Because if it looks too patterned, then it doesn't really look like a bushel of apples, if that makes sense. So just trying to come in with some random bits. Now you'll notice that my um, camera keeps going in and out of focus. This was before I learned a trick to auto focus or to, to force your camera to always focus on the same spot. Um, when your hand comes into the, the frame of the picture that close, then your, your camera wants to focus on your hand instead of the cookie. So just a side note. Um, using my piping consistency here just to pipe some stems and some leaves. Um, I tried it on one cookie piping all of them and it just just looked like too much which is why I'm not doing all of the apples in this case. And that is the bushel of apples! Oh, it makes me so happy. Alright, this one here is the plaque. If friends were apples, I'd pick you. <laughs> I know. I'm a big fan of puns on cookies. Can't help it. Just can't help it. And this cookie cutter here is one of my classics that I've had from the beginning and I still use. This is an Ann Clark cookie cutters. It's a metal cutter. You can find it in my Amazon shop or on Amazon. Super easy to purchase. Classic standard shape. It's a pretty sizable cookie. I think it's, gosh, I want to say it's maybe four and a half inches, at least four. So it's a, it's a big cookie, but it's a nice blank canvas to do a lot of different things. When I'm doing a shape like this with those really pointed peaks in corners, I always like to use my scribe to help the icing get to the corners. That was an air bubble right there that I was just popping. Gonna let that settle and crust over. And now here, 
I am using my projector to project the lettering that I put into my Word on my Word document on my computer, typed out what I wanted to say, and then, I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but I take a screenshot of the lettering in Word, and that becomes then a JPEG file, and that's what I use, or maybe it's, yeah, it's a JPEG, and that's what I use to actually project onto my cookie. Now, I'm going to pause and come right back because I'm not remembering the font at this moment, but I'll be right back. I'm going to figure that out. Hey friends, I'm back. All right, the font is a Magnolia Sky. So there are a handful of fonts that I have downloaded that I like to use, and this is one of them. The consistency that I'm using here, I can actually tell is closer to a medium peak than a soft peak. If you've watched my consistencies video, you know that I'm a big fan of the soft peak for lettering. But I do say at the same time that if you're really struggling with your consistency and it's between making it too thin or too thick, absolutely go on the thick side. So this is more like a medium peak and it's getting the job done. You know, I can tell it's a medium peak because the downstroke, the thicker stroke, just has a bit too much texture in it than I would really like. If it was a soft peak, it would have less texture and kind of smooth out better on its own. I, again, don't have the patience to actually smooth out my lettering. I just do it and let it be what it is. This kind of lettering I'm doing here is called pressure piping lettering, and that's because I'm varying the pressure on my bag as I'm piping. So on the downstroke, I'm increasing the pressure on my bag, and on the upstroke, I'm releasing most of my pressure. Not all of it, because if I completely release my pressure, then icing is not going to come out of the bag. Sad day. This is probably, well, I'd say all lettering is hardest. I was gonna say this is the hardest, but all lettering is hard. This is hard because you have to continuously change the pressure on your bag. And that can be hard to wrap your head around, if that makes sense just because it's a lot of multitasking. And to complete this, I just did my cute little apples in the center. Again, this is like maybe closer to a medium peak-ish. You know, this looks like, this looks like maybe like soft peak, but I definitely could have done a better job helping it to settle with the tip of my bag, leaving it with quite a lot of texture there, but that's fine. My little baby apple. See there, I was trying to go in after the fact and help it settle more. If you're going to do that, it's better to help it settle while you're piping and not wait. But good enough, y'all. Good enough. So I like the little details here. I'm just adding these tiny little leaves and stems. I didn't do anything special with the tip of my bag for those leaves. It's just a normal open tip open round tip because um, they're so small that no one's no one's gonna notice if I do the special tip cut on the bag for leaves and after I piped that I felt like it needed a little something extra to kind of tie it all in so I'm doing an outline here on the edge of the cookie and for this kind of outline I really like to have it hug the very outer edge of the flood and not like sit on top of it if it make if that makes sense. I feel like sometimes if you let the outline sit on top of the flood then sometimes you see that white icing piping through on the edge and that's not what I wanted friends that's not what I wanted. I know I'm ridiculous that's fine. <laughs> and there we go oh man how did we get to the end of the set already? Well I really hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope you try some of this yourself.